Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing really well. As always, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my full song breakdowns and guitar lessons. Today we're doing Tears Don't Fall Part 2. I've already put a full cover out for this song, so if you want to see the song played up to speed, uh, my interpretation of it, I'll leave a little uh, link down below for you guys so you can go and check that out. So before we get into the lesson video, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a background on the song itself. It's from the very divisive and fan-dividing uh, 2013 album Tampa Tampa. The album was pretty much recorded all by Matt and Moose. They flew out to Thailand and left uh, poor Padge and, and Jay back at home. I think what was going on is there was a little bit of a rough patch for the band and they all weren't getting on, so... I think Matt had the idea to just leave two of the guys at home and just fly out with Moose and just uh, try and put an album together. Around that time as well, in the 2012 sort of uh, period, Matt did his Axe Wound project, his side project. They put uh, an album out called Vultures, and that thing was recorded, um, written and recorded in about two weeks uh, between him and, and Jason Ball, Bullets, but current drummer who was also in Axe Wound, right? And I think he he loved the vibe that he captured on that album, just no, no pre-production and just like straight in, Okay, is a cool riff. Let's record it. Okay, song done. Next. You know, no, no thinking, just more about just like capturing the vibe, I guess you could say. And um, I think he really wanted to do that for the Bullet album. So he asked management um, or the label or whatever it w was, uh, can we have a go of doing it this way? And they said, well, if you think you can do it, uh, you know, and, and deliver, then absolutely, if, if you think you can do it. You know, so he said, yeah, absolutely. Love a challenge. Flew out to Thailand, started recording the album, just him and Moose and the producer and, um, and whoever else. And in the middle of that writing process, they asked the fans on Facebook, they put like a question thing out and said, if you wanted to see a part two of a song, what song would you want to see a part two of? And loads of people were putting things like Waking the Demon and stuff like that. Some people were putting Scream Aim Fire um, in the comments section. Um, but a lot of people were saying Tears Don't Put Fall Part Two. And, uh, you know, within a day or something, uh, they, they put another post out saying, you, the fans, have spoken, we, the band, have listened. And the next thing, we get a Tears Don't Fall, Fall Part 2 announced for the album. Uh, and I think that caused quite a lot of uh, excitement for fans, you know, um, because T Tears Don't Fall is pretty much a, a gateway song um, for a lot of people into this genre and into this band. It was probably the, arguably, the biggest song they've put out, so... You know, for a lot of the long-time fans, the idea of hearing a part two of one of their favorite songs or maybe the first Bullet song that they heard, uh, the idea of that was uh, pretty huge at the time. If you know how to play Tears Don't Fall, uh, the original song, the first song, I've already got a lesson for that video. So if you scroll back way back on my channel, I think it was like the first lesson video that I did or the first or second one, you can go learn that there. But if you already know how to play it, it's quite similar um, just in terms of like key and what chords and things that they're using. And then just one final point on the song as well, it's never been performed live. I've spoken to quite a lot of people recently, either in my YouTube comments or over on my Instagram. Um, and they've all said how much they want to see this song played live and I remember in the magazines uh, at the time like you know for like the promo when this album came out uh, Matt said words to the effect of um, you know th this is the the first album that we've put out that we, we can actually play as a band front to back in a rehearsal space so that said I think a lot of people were actually hoping to hear this song um, but unfortunately They've, uh, they've never done it, and uh, many people have said to me, like I said, they, they really want to see this one played live as like a back-to-back th you know, back -back thing with like Tears Don't Fall and then go straight into this. So because of that, it's probably made this song a little bit tricky for me to work out. Uh, I always like to use like a live performance as a reference point, um, a, a source material when I'm working these songs out and, and leave links for you guys down below. But for this video, my source material is literally just the uh, the track itself and uh, many hours just sat panning it around in Cubase trying to hear what's going on. So unfortunately, there's no live performance for me to see really what's going on. So I've had to make a load of decisions um, based on what I think the band would do from playing their music for so long, you know, getting acquainted with their playing style. So I've had to basically use my knowledge of how they play and obviously just listening to the track itself so those are my reference points for this lesson video so i thought i'd just talk about the tuning real quick we've got a standard drop c tuning so that's a d standard guitar you guys know the drill at this point um it's standard d standard guitar um but you tune in the sixth string down to a c okay so low to high you'll have c g c f a d okay c g c f a d the song is in the key of uh, G minor, and that puts us in a relative of A sharp major. One last thing I'll mention as well is just the gear that I'm using. I'm using my uh, 
my BC Rich uh, Matt Tuck signature, the new one that I purchased just recently. Um, that's running into my camper, which is going into my Scarlet Focus, right? And then that's running into my, my digital audio workstation, which is Cubase. So the first thing we've got is intro part one. And I thought um, I would mention the, 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 the sort of uh, swells that are going on, the sort of um, the little leady sustained notes and how they're getting that sound. I'll show you the notes they're playing. I wasn't going to do this, but just because I'm... Um, overly OCD about parts and stuff like that. I thought I'd just throw it in there just in case there's any confusion about how they're getting that sound. You think of like the end, um, the, the last track on the poison, the way those sort of volume swells, well not even volume swells, but they're sustained guitars, the way they sort of fade out. It's almost like as a throwback to the poison with Tears Don't Fall part two, those guitars, similar sort of thing fading back in, you know, revisiting it. I like the sort of, um, the idea of revisiting, it's, it's, it's quite clever the way they've done that using the same idea. So I'll show you the two guitars that are being sustained. The way they do that is they use a little device called an Ebo, I think it's called. What that does is when you when you bring it to the strings, it starts sustaining your notes. It's a little bit like having a sustainer on your guitar. I know some like Sinister Gates guitars already come with one of those installed, but if you haven't got one of those and you, and you want to get this sound, just go buy an Ebo. Just put it by the strings, by the pickups, to, to, to the best of my knowledge, this is how it works anyway. And just start fretting notes and they'll just sustain for you all day, okay? So you've got a, uh, a guitar that's all the way over on the left. And th this is very simple stuff. You're just going to do three runs of the following. You've got a fifth fret on the first string. And you hold that for as long as you like and then until your guitar dies out if you've not got the ear bell. Then you're going to do first fret. And then you're going to do third fret. And you do that three times in a row, okay? Now, I'm picking those, obviously, so you, so you can hear them. But I believe what he's doing is he's sort of like sliding between them. So it'd be like... Which is really hard to do without the notes sort of like dying out. But like I said, this is just me drawing your attention to actually what's going on. Um, but how it's achieved and, and the sustains achieved is the little uh, Ebo device that they put by the pickups, okay? So um, so that's your first guitar. You're just going to do that three times in a row, which th this is all panda all the way over on the left. Okay, I'm not going to play it three times in a row. Just use your ear, listen to the track, and you'll, you'll hear what's going on. But those are the notes. You're just doing that three times in a row, sustaining them for as long as you like, if, if, you, if you can, if you've got that amount of sustain on your guitar. The next guitar is doing a very similar thing, which is over on the right. And that is basically doing the, the same sort of thing, but you've got frets 20, 17, and 19 on the first string instead. So you'll have 20. Slide down. To 17 and then slide up to 19 okay so it's really hard to get the idea without the, the notes dying out but and that's it so for any of you guys who are wanting to give that a go those are your notes just play both guitars three times in a row Use your ear, you'll hear it on the track. Okay, so with that clarified and, and out of the way, let's get into sort of the main meat of the song now, okay? So this is your intro part one, but this is your clean guitar riff that comes in. Make sure that you're happy with this when you learn this, because this is going to be the riff that's played in, in all your verses as well. So I'll play it through for you, and then we'll break it down. <laughs> Okay, so that's that. So how does that work? So you're going to start off on the on your open on the on the fifth string. Okay, it's palm muted, but I'm accenting or rather not palm muting uh, the ascending notes. Okay, so I've got the notes that are running up there on the fourth string. You're going to have uh, five to seven, seven to nine, and then nine to ten. Okay, so you've got. And I'm down picking all of that to get the desired effect. Um, and also, you know, just watch out for your little mutes that happen in the middle of the uh, the, the notes that are sending up the little pedal points on the, on the open A string. So you've got... And 
Okay, very simple stuff right there. So as for the next part, I suppose the only difficult thing here would be is uh, the stretches and they're quite um, bar cordy, I suppose, as well. So um, just work on getting your stretch with this. So you, you're gonna change your, your, your pedal point, okay, the note I keep referring back to, you're gonna change that now to the, uh, the, the third fret six string, okay? So then what you're gonna do with your third finger is you're gonna bring it over to the fifth fret fourth string, okay? And you're gonna have, okay? And you're gonna have to string skip there, okay? So fifth string, not in use. Okay, and your pinky's gonna take care of seventh fret, so. And then you're gonna put your notes in between, and then you're gonna go back. So seven back to five, so you've got. With your notes in between, just single notes uh, as your paddle points. And then make sure you but your first finger is barred nice and flat. And you're gonna do three to five all on that one string, okay? And that's why you really need to make sure that your bar and finger is nice and flat. Best way to get your bar is, um, you know, keep your thumb behind the neck, okay? Keep your first finger in line with it and come put yourself right up to the fret wire in front, not on it, okay? You, you don't wanna be on the fret, but you wanna be just behind it, okay? Nice, nice and in line with it. If you find yourself going backwards like that, not only are your barred notes underneath, you know, gonna gonna die out, and this goes for any bar chord that you're gonna be playing, um, but not not only that, you, you're just not gonna have the reach, you know, so bring your wrist inward. Look how much reach I've got. I can reach over the neck itself if I, if I bring my wrist toward the body. And when I say angle your wrist, you know, I, d I don't mean like that, okay? That's the, f that's the first thing that people do. If you try and do that, keeping it in a straight line, you're never gonna get a bar chord of any sort, okay? let your wrist drop, all right? And that's how you're gonna get the reach. So that little part in its entirety. Okay. And being sure to put your uh, one, two, right on the end of that, on the, on the sixth string on your pedal point. That's gonna take you in to your next part, which is gonna be at fifth fret, okay? And it's the same idea, same sort of stretch. I'll show you what happens. Okay, so that's that. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four on the uh, on the on the sixth string, and you're gonna have nine to seven. Okay, so you're gonna have okay. And then what comes after that is you've got this. So this, now again, it's gonna be a real test of where your barring is at, okay? And uh, you're gonna bring your third finger down onto the, the third string, seventh fret, and you know, try, try not to move around too much with your first finger. And make sure that you're happy with how you've barred there because you're gonna to need to get this, uh, this fifth fret on the third string out as well. So when I pick on the third string, seventh fret, I'm going back to fifth fret, which is barred, okay? So I've got, okay? And when I'm doing that, I'm going down the strings after that. I'm going fourth string, fifth string, okay? So it's, okay? So seven, five, 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 okay? And then it's gonna be the same thing for nine. You're gonna go, so nine, five, 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 and your nine is on the on the uh, the third string as well, okay? So you got okay. So that part all together. And pay attention to where the palm mutes are there as well, you know. So the your paddle points are muted. The nine to the seven is not. However, the little notes from the third string are all palm muted. And that's how you'll get that sound. Okay, you might wanna keep your guitar tone nice and dry for this as well, and a clean tone. Don't layer it with loads of delays and reverbs and stuff like that. It's not Venom, okay, where you're looking for that sort of wall of sound. This is very, very, very stripped back. 
and such as sort of like the the overtone for this entire album. So what I'll do is I'll play all those parts together for you now, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to put it together. <laughs> So that is your intro part one. That takes us over into uh, intro part two. And um, there's a couple of guitars uh, making up this wall of sound. This is a very, very dense record. And, and this song is is really, really dense. It's got so many guitars layered in order to make this sort of like wall of sound that you're hearing. That makes it tricky to work out what's actually going on and what's doing what. But um, after sitting with the track for a, a long time in Cubase and going and re because I just couldn't get happy with the cover, I was I re recorded that cover about I don't know three times or something, um, and and even again I'm, I'm just before doing this last and I've had to change a load of things just to try and get it as accurate as possible for you guys. Again, this is in, this is my interpretation, but this is what I believe to be going on. If you listen to the track, hopefully you'll hear what I do. Okay, so. You've got basically um, three guitars, okay? We'll start with the left guitar, then we'll do the right guitar. These are your main sort of guitars. But then there's an overdub part, which is doing the all-important couple of things, okay? So don't worry. You'll, you'll think to yourself, hang on a minute. There's certain things in there. There's certain elements missing from the left and right guitars that make up that sound. Where are they? Stick with it. I'll show you the overdub guitar, and if you listen to the track, you'll hear how it just comes and goes. Okay, so I'll show you the left guitar first, then we'll do the right guitar, and um, then I'll show you the overdub one. So, left guitar looks something like this. Okay, trust me, <laughs> I'll show you why. Okay, so it's gonna begin <clears throat> with just an A chord, okay? You can play it there, or you can play it here as a uh, bard on the, uh, on the on the seventh fret, but I like to do it here, okay? Start our lars for a little bit more ring out with the open A note, okay? So you've got your first finger, second fret, fourth string, and then you've got your open A string um, or fifth string above that, okay? And you're just gonna... Then you're gonna bring it to your, your, your power chord at third fret. Then you're gonna bring it to your uh, your fifth fret. And you're gonna cut it short. You're just gonna do like a one, two, three, four before going off into the tail. For your left guitar, that would be this. So that is seventh fret on the third string. And keep this alternate pick now. And slide up into nine. And then you're gonna pick nine. And he sort of slides, he picks and slides down to four. Okay, so you've got. Okay, so that's your riff. You're just gonna do that twice. Okay, so all together, left guitar, nice and easy. Okay, so that's your left guitar. Really, really simple stuff right there. Uh, your right guitar is just gonna do exactly the same thing, okay? Uh, chords wise, just exactly the same, do exactly what you just did for your left guitar, but instead of the um, uh, the, the little licky thing at the end, um, being on the third string, you're gonna come over onto fourth string and you're gonna have frets nine, 10, five. Okay, so it's this lower sort of harmony. And that would look something like this. Okay. Very, very simple. So nine, ten, five. All right. 
Um, so I'll play right guitar in its entirety for you. And uh, then I'll show you the overdub. Okay, so that is your main rhythm guitars for this section. Now we'll talk about the all-important missing ingredients where you're thinking, where are they? Uh, they're right here on the overdub. Okay, and listen to the track. You'll hear how these next two parts are just stuck in there as an extra guitar. Okay, and you'll hear how the left and right guitars are sustaining those, those chords. They're not changing out for, for these parts that I'm going to show you. I think um, it's one of those riffs which is really hard to play um, and make it sound good when you, you, you do everything together for the recording. You know, it's one of those where you do need to split things up. So I'll show you the overdub and then we'll talk about how uh, I did it in my cover, okay? Because you'll see me doing it in my cover and you go, well, hang on a minute, that's not how you did it. I'll explain. So the all important things that we're missing uh, are these. You've got Okay, now I guess the da na 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 things that we've just done will be part of an overdub as well. But the um, the main left and right rhythm guitars cease when those parts come in. So that's why I've thrown those parts onto the left and right guitars because that's uh, th there's nothing else happening there apart from those little melodic slidey lead lines. Okay, um, so after the, the the riff gets going with a with with the A chord. An overdub guitar comes in and it does these dyads running up the neck. You've got... Okay, it just moves up in thirds, okay? So you're going to have... Um, and what I mean by there is intervals. If you want to see me a la do, do a lesson talking about the theory um, behind that sort of thing, let me know down below, okay? So the first chord that you've got, or dyad, I should say, triad, three notes, dyad, two notes. So it's a dyad, and you're going to have uh, five and seven, so third finger or pinky, whichever you prefer. Um, and you're going to go um, seventh fret, fourth string, first finger, uh, fifth fret, third string, okay? You're going to do one, two, three, four. Then you're going to bring that shape up to nine and seven. And then lastly, you're going to shorten the shape, and you're going to have nine and ten. So your, your fingers are staying on the same strings, okay? So your first finger is going to be doing nine on the third string, and then your middle finger, I like to swap out from the middle finger at this point, will be doing ten on the, on the fourth string. Okay? And you just run them up the neck. Okay? So there's your first overdub gu guitar part, because what you're hearing is... And look how empty that sounds without the being sustained underneath it, right? That's the magic of uh, studio trickery, okay? Making things sound really full. So you've got the two guitars going at the same time, and this just added in, okay? So that's the first part of the overdub. The next part of the overdub, of course, is the um, real callback to Tears Don't Fall, if, if you know how to play uh, the, the first one, which is... Um, Okay, now he doesn't strum the first part of it. It's literally the that comes in. Okay, so how do we do that? If you know your um, your tears don't fall, uh, the, you know sort of like the first chord in the in the main riff from that. It's that. Okay, so you're gonna buy your first finger right the way across. And even though we're not gonna be playing like the sixth and fifth strings here, it's good practice to keep them there. Um, just in case you do want to bang all this together later on um, and put the overdubs with like the main part so you'll be able to play the first part of it which is the power chord on top and then the melodic thing underneath so you get your first finger barred across uh, third fret then bring your third finger over and you're going to be going fifth fret uh, third string 
pinky stretches over sixth fret second string and then you want with your bar third fret first string okay with your first finger so make sure that these fingers don't fall flat otherwise they'll end up killing that note underneath so get it nice and flat Okay, and uh, that's how you're gonna do it. You're just gonna go. So the, Matt, Matt Tuck's used this chord many times before. If you've recently watched my um, Suffocating Under Words of Sorrow lesson, it's all over that song, Hearts Burst Into Fire, Tis Don't Fall, Dignity. All those songs have this chord. Um, so you've got your one with your pinky over in sixth fret. And I'm sort of strumming from the fourth string down there. And then I'm bringing my pinky in to fifth fret. And then I'm taking my pinky off. So I've got five, three, three. Okay, my first finger's barring the two threes on the uh, the second and first string. Okay, so you'll have. All right, so. And that's it. And those are your two overdub parts, okay? So your first one. Okay, and then the last part is the, the little lady things that we've already done sort of uh, right at the end uh, if, if, if each time you play it. Um, so what did I do in my cover? I recorded two guitars as I always do. I, I just try and record it like them. Um, the guitar that I put over there on the right, I just kind of did as the main sort of... The main thing where the chords are hanging out um, with, without any of those overdub parts. But the part that I played on my cover in the video, I kind of banged those riffs together, which is what I imagine you guys are going to be doing, okay? So um, what I did was something like this. Something like that. So I'll play that slow for you again, but you'll see just how messy that guitar part is to play. If you find that you're making a load of noise by jumping around and it just feels a bit awkward, especially with that first part. It feels a little bit empty when you jump over to that, that first part with the dyads that run up the neck, you know. Um, th that's because it's not recorded that way, okay. But for the live version, or, well, or rather, you know, um, you guys playing at home or, or with your band or, or with a good, another guitar player or, or just by yourself, whatever, um, th this will work to get you through. So I'll, I'll show you one more time what I did, but those are all your parts separated. This is what I did. Okay, and that's it. So that is your intro part two. Make sure that you're happy with all that because those are going to be uh, your choruses. Um, and uh, the, uh, the the overdub guitar isn't as prominent in the choruses, but if you really listen carefully, it, it, it is in there, okay? Um, but we'll maybe talk about that a little bit more in the, when we get to the choruses. But that is your intro part two, and I hope that's helped, and I hope that's cleared some stuff up about how the riff's played, and most importantly, how it was recorded, and why it sounds the way it does, and why it can be um, tricky, to, tricky to play or tricky to make it sound good. So that brings us over into verse number one now, and uh, for your clean guitar part, you're literally just going to play the intro twice, okay? So I'll demonstrate it. I'll play it through for you just so you get the gist of it again, but it is literally what you did in the intro. So um, here we go. It, it, it's twice through. <laughs> Okay, so it's just same riff, 
twice back to back. The only thing that does happen in it is, is there's some uh, uh, palm muted sort of stabs that are going to be coming in and I'll show you what that is now. So you're going to flip back over onto a, a heavy tone if, if you want to do this part. And this happens uh, halfway through the verse, okay? So, you know, if, if you were playing this, you know, going back and forth between your clean tone, if you had like a, you know, foot switch on the floor or whatever, um, you know, coming out of that intro part one, clean tone, play the, uh, the, 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 the intro riff once through. If you want to stay on that, play it again. If you want to do this part, switch back to your heavy tone. This is halfway through. And... Uh, it goes something like this. Okay, so that's very, very simple. You're just going to be playing the chords that you played for the intro part one, the main sort of riff, but you're going to be palm muting them. Try not to uh, get this too boomy, you know. You don't want like a... Um, like a real thick chug for this, okay? It, it's quite dead, so I, I find that if I bring my palm just forward a little bit, it gives me that more of a scratchy sort of thing going on, as opposed to like a... Yeah, which works for different things, you know? Um, but you want these to sound a little bit more dead than, than your standard palm mute, so bring your palm a little bit more onto the strings. The further back you go, the more boomy, and chuggy it is, the further forward you come, the more sort of uh, dead it sounds, okay? The only thing I would say about coming forward with your palm, if you're going to do this technique, try not to push on the strings too much, because if you come forward from the bridge, the strings have got a lot more sort of elasticity. Um, good word, hey. <laughs> um, so, you know, bring it forward, but don't push down, because you'll end up uh, changing the pitch of the strings, and that's not what you want, okay? So you've got your A chord to start with. Finishing it with just that single pick. Moving over onto your third fret power chord. Finishing it with the one there and then bringing it over onto five. Finishing it with the one right there, okay? So that is that section again for you. Make sure you're happy with all that, by the way, because that's going to be your verses right the way through the song. Uh, this song is very, very, very copy and paste uh, once you've learned the sections. So that takes us over into pre-chorus number one now. Um, it's guitar left and right pretty much doing the same thing, but the only thing that changes at the end are your little um, little notes that take you over into the uh, into the chorus. Okay, so I'll, I'll play uh, I'll play the left guitar through for you. Um, but this main sort of rhythm section will serve for the right guitar as well. And then I'll show you what notes are happening at the end of it, okay? So it looks something like this. Something like that, okay? So I'll break it down for you. This is your left guitar, so you've got... So that's your first part, okay? So you've got three to five on the on the sixth string, okay? And you're palm muting all of it, okay? So just watch my picking, follow my picking, and uh, and you'll get it. So and then you're going back to three. And it's the only thing that changes when you go to that five. You're gonna do like a one, two, three, four at the end of it, just before the the licky thing, okay? So it, it's gonna be easier if I just play it and you watch my picking rather than giving you every single last down and up, okay? It just gets too confusing. So watch my right hand and uh, you'll get it. Okay, so that's that. Your lick at the end of that for your left guitar is gonna be 
9, 10, 7 on the third string. And I kind of hammer from, uh, from 9 to 10. You know, you can slide back into 7 or you can pick. You can pick 9 and slide back into it. It's entirely up to you. Okay, but I think that's how they're doing it. They're picking the 10 and sliding it down. Okay, so that is your left guitar. Very, very simple stuff right there. I'll play it through once more for you. Okay, um, the right guitar, just do exactly the same thing. Um, rhythm guitar wise, okay, but for the end little lick, you're just going to do something completely different, which is going to be this. Okay, so again, that's third string. I mean, you could play it higher up if you wanted to, but it seems to be closer to, to, to the rhythm parts, you know, if you, if you were to do it down here rather than further up the neck on a different string. So what we got, we've got five, five to seven, and then seven down to uh, four, okay? Same idea. Pick in five, hammer in seven, and then bringing it down to uh, to fourth fret. Okay, you can just pick four without the slide. It's your choice. Okay, so right guitar all together. Okay, so that is your uh, your pre-chorus rhythm guitar parts. There is a, a little uh, lead um, that comes over the top of that, and I'll show you that now. It's um, it's very simple. Uh, it goes something like this. And that takes you right up into the da -na -na, uh, thing that we've just done at the end of uh, those uh, palm-eated rhythms, okay? So that little lead part, you're just going to slide into it on the third string up to the seventh fret. Pick ninth fret. And the middle finger is going to do eighth fret on the second string. Then you're going to go... Uh, nine seven nine and I pick nine and slide it down to four okay and give four a bit of a wobble yeah like that okay so you want then you do the same thing again and just end it on seven instead okay so, so it's exactly the same the second time through. You just finish it on uh, on seven right there on the third string. So, uh, lead part for your pre-chorus um, all together. Okay. So um, that's that's nice because if you want to play that part like I did on my cover, um, that takes you right up until where you'd go. And uh, that takes you over into your chorus, right? So um, it, it fits in quite nicely if you want to do that part. So that is your pre-chorus. Make sure you're happy with all that because that is uh, your pre-choruses for the, uh, the entire song. So chorus number one is literally intro part two. Uh, we do not need to go over that. Just play everything um, as, uh, as I showed you. All those parts. The overdubs, like I said, they're a little bit more dialed back in the, in the chorus for whatever reason. Um, but if you, if you listen, you can hear them. You know, but I would recommend, you know, for the chorus, um, what I was doing anyway was just the straight chords, you know. <laughs> With, uh, with your lick of choice on the end, whether you want to do the lower one or the higher one, it's entirely up to you, but yes, 
chorus number one, exactly the same. Okay, so um, that takes us through into verse number two. Guess what? You guessed it. Exactly the same. Don't need to go over that. Pre-chorus number two, exactly the same. Okay, and uh, chorus number two is exactly the same. So literally, you're just going to copy and paste, you know, the, uh, the, the parts that you learned earlier for those parts. Okay, so... Do not need to go over any of that. That takes us over into the uh, into the bridge section, okay? This is going to be one of those where it's just going to be easier for me to play it, and hopefully you guys will get the gist. Just follow my um, my picking uh, and my right hand because um, it is very, very simple stuff. Um, in terms of um, what guitar is doing what, there is a split here. You've got the left guitar, which is sort of taking uh, the bulk of the rhythm here, and the right guitar... Um, does some jabs in very, very typical standard bullet formula for stuff like this. The right guitar does some jabs for like the first half of the section and then joins in in unison in the second half, okay? So we'll look at the left guitar first. So this is on your um, your lead up to the guitar solo, your bridge section. And um, it looks something like this, okay? So it's all based off of the A chord and it goes... Okay, so that is your left guitar, okay? Um, that one's sort of taking the, uh, the the main sort of bulk of the work there. I've actually had to play that along to the track at slowed down speed for you guys and just cut the track out because um, that's just a lot to try and get right timing-wise on your own. So um, hopefully um, I slowed it down enough for you guys to see what's going on there. So just keep it alternate, okay? Um, keep it slow to begin with, work your way up with speed. Um, watch out for the stabs in the middle. Hopefully I demonstrate those nice and clearly. Yeah, just make sure that your stabs on the, on the, on the A chords in the middle right there, they're all accented, so be sure to take your, uh, your palm off the bridge for that part. But other than that, it's all palm muted. So I'll show you what the right guitar is doing now. So the right guitar is just starting off with a jab, and then it comes in again in the middle of it on that A chord, and then it joins in in unison with, uh, with the guitar on the left around halfway through the section, okay? So I'll play it for you now. Okay, so there's your bridge section guitars. Hopefully I demonstrated that clearly enough. Just um, follow my picking, listen to the track. It's very straightforward stuff right there. So um, yeah, that's that. Uh, that takes us through into the, uh, the solo section. We're gonna do the rhythm guitars and then the solo at the end, like I said. So this is guitars left and right. I'll play it through for you and then we'll break it down. Okay, um, so let's have a look at what's going on. I was actually surprised um, to find um, these guys in here. These big sort of uh, suspended kind of chords. It's really hard to work out what's going on under that solo section because the solo itself is taking up so much uh, real estate sonically. Um, so it's really hard to tell what the rhythms are doing precisely. But um, like I said, after hours of, of listening over and over and over and over again and um, I think I've got it, okay? So it's gonna be first finger, seventh fret, but, uh, power chord, okay? But bring your pinky over onto 10th uh, fret, fourth string. 
You're gonna gonna be going back and forth between that and then bringing the pinky into seventh fret. So you've got 10, seven, 10, seven. Okay, and the rhythm is. Okay, so the first one I'm sort of like strumming across all of them. And then it's like one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come onto F5, this power chord right here. So fifth and fourth string, you've got a uh, uh, eight and 10. Same rhythm. And I'm, I'm killing them off there in the middle, um, just so you guys can hear where the cut is to sort of like separate it rhythmically, but let them bleed into one another, let them hang. Like that, right? So. And you're gonna do exactly the same thing at G5. So it's 10, 12 this time with your power chord. Okay, so you've got. Okay, and then you're gonna finish it off with an E5 power chord. So that is your uh, your seven and nine, okay? And the rhythm changes here. You've got. That's the only thing to watch out for, okay? So. Lots of palm mutes, lots of accenting in there. Listen for where the accents are. So. Okay, so everything so far looks something like this. Okay. Then it reboots itself. You do the same amount of your um, your seventh fret power chords with the pinky stretched across. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go come over to your uh, your F five, up to your G five. Then what you've got is this rundown, okay? Okay, so after you've gone up to your G5, exactly the same thing as you did earlier, which is your 10 and 12. You're gonna cut it and go. And what that is, it's F, E, D, E, D, C, okay? Okay, so. Then you're gonna finish that. A big hang on your six string power chord, third fret. And then count two, three, four, and then bring that to fifth fret. Two, three, four, and that's it, okay? So you've got. And that's your solo rhythm section, okay? So it's, um. Not what I thought <laughs> in certain places, you know, um, but uh, I believe that's as, as accurate as I, I can get it for you guys. Um, so I'll put the whole thing together for you now, just as a little, little run through and then we'll move on. So it looks something like this.
and that's it, okay? Um, so that is your guitar solo rhythm section, guitars left and right. Um, and it's fun. It's, it, it's um, well, <laughs> it's definitely the more fun part for me personally, rather than playing that solo, which um, I had problems with, but uh, we'll talk about that when we do it. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a really cool, underrated Bullet of My Valentine riff, which I guess not a whole lot of people knew existed unless you were really sort of paying attention. So that is your guitar solo rhythm that takes us over into verse number three right now. And um, that is just the uh, the last half of the verse, okay? Use your ear, you'll, you'll, you'll hear it. Um, the clean guitar is still going, so it's the second time the clean guitar is being played, and then you've got your... Your, uh, your chord jabs over the top, so it's just from that point, okay, with your palm mutes. So that's your verse number three. That takes us over into pre-chorus number three. Guess what? Same. Good news, right? Um, and that takes us over into chorus number three. And um, you're going to do exactly the same thing that, that you've been doing for all your choruses, but you're just going to play it twice in a row, okay? Um, but you're going to end it on a big A5. <laughs> power chord to, to finish it off okay so i'm not going to play all that right the way through because you've already seen me do it like i said it's just the chorus twice all right you've already learned that riff which is your main sort of intro part two riff um the only thing that will be different about it i suppose is just end with whatever your guitar that you're following with a big fat a chord right at the end until fade okay so for argument's sake the, the last time through if we were doing the right guitar it would be like You can sustain that for as uh, as long as you like, um, and, and that's the idea. So, like I said, I'm going over and over it here, but yeah, exactly the same thing, um, just uh, two times round. Um, the one thing that I will show you is the little uh, lead that comes um, on this on the second run of that chorus, okay? Um, and it goes something like this. Okay, so it's just the same thing twice. How we're doing that is this. We're sliding in on the third string into uh, fifth, then you're gonna go seven, and then pinky uh, eight on the second string. So five, seven, second string, pinky, eight. Then You've got your uh, five, seven, and then back to four. And again, give that four a bit of a shake. Then, do exactly the same thing as you did originally, uh, which is five, seven, eight on the second string. Then what you're gonna do is this. Okay which is eight, slide up to 10 on the second string, back to eight, and then first finger on a seventh fret, third string, okay? Okay, so that would be. Okay, so you just play that whole thing through twice, all right? So I'll play it through for you one more time. And that's it. And then at the end of that, that's where your rhythm guitars hang. So that is all your main guitar parts for Tears Don't Fall Part 2. Okay, so um, a very, very copy and paste song, you know, verse 
pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, repeat, you know. Um, so, yeah, I've got nothing to add on that. Hopefully I've demonstrated everything as clearly as possible for you. Um, and uh, if you need to go back over any of the sections, please do so. The timestamps are below for you guys. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to move over into the guitar solo. Okay, so the moment you've all been waiting for, or I imagine a lot of you guys have uh, skipped ahead to, um, we're going to do the guitar solo now, and boy, did this thing give me problems. Um, there's so many approaches that you can take with certain parts on this one. I have sat for hours with this thing, trying to get it uh, as accurate as possible for you guys. Um, you'll see that I may have done certain things a different way in my cover to what I'm going to show you to what I think is on the record itself. Um, and I will explain why I did certain things a certain way. Okay, so we're going to take it section by section, as always. There's a, there's five sections, um, and then I'll show you the little harmony lead thing that happens after the guitar solo right at the end. Um, but I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the first section, and um, I'll show you the two ways that you can do it, and uh, we'll go from there. So the first section would look something like this. Okay, now in order to get the uh, the tone for this guitar solo, um, I would say like neck pickup all the way for this, okay? Um, and that's gonna give you that really rich warm tone that he's got going on. Now that leads me to believe that it's being played further up the neck. You can play that run where I played it in my cover, um, a little bit lower down on the neck down here. on the first string. It's literally just the same notes, okay? I'll show you um, what I did for that later, and I'll show you why I did that, but this is the way I'm pretty sure Padge is, is doing it um, on the record. So he's gonna start off, it's all on one string, you're on the second string. And this is your pattern. For everything that's going up and down the neck, okay? So you've got uh, 17, first finger, down to uh, 13. Then you're gonna do middle finger, which is 15, and then up to 17, and then descend it, 15, 13. So you've got, okay? You can do one each on each pattern. Okay, then you're gonna move it back. Same uh, same pattern, same picking pattern, all alternate picked, which is a must right here. And if you want to get anywhere close to the speed that he's doing it, because it is rapid. Um, then you've got a fifth frets, uh, 15, uh, 13, and 12. So you're going to go. Okay. So you've got so far. Then you're gonna bring it back to your 17, 15, 13. Okay, and then you're gonna bring it forward and you're gonna have uh, 18, 17, and 15. So, okay, so everything so far. Okay. Once more. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to where you started from, which is your 17, 15, 13. Then you're going to start ascending after that one. You're going to go back to the 18, 17, 15. Then you're going to have 20, 18, 17. Then you're gonna have 22, 20, 18. Same pattern. Okay? So you've got. Okay? 
Now, I'm not sure if you did this on a 24 fret guitar because the next lick on a 22 fret guitar, you're going to have to come all the way back here and change your strings, okay? So the reason I did it another way, starting on the first string, is so that I could just do a straight climb without having to jump strings and get to that final target lick, okay, which we haven't done yet, okay? So I'll show you everything thus far. I'll show you the target lick. Um, but I think either, because that get at that speed, getting from that to that, the next lick that's following, changing strings, it was so hard to do, okay? Um, so I think he finds these notes for the next section further up. It, it, maybe, maybe not, I'm not too sure. But I'll play everything we've got so far, okay? And then we'll take it from there. So you've got... Okay, then what you've got is this run. Very, um, very typical patch pattern that he's done that a lot over his career. So you're going to jump now, which makes no sense to me, but stay with me. You're going to jump over uh, onto the first and second string. So you're going to start with your pinky and um, you're going to have uh, 19. Down to your first finger at 15. And you're your middle finger on 17 in the middle. So you've got. Okay. So 19, 15, 17. Back up to 19, 17, 15. Then what you're going to do is you're going to bring your pinky. And this is all diatonic, by the way, all very minor scale positions. Everything works together mathematically, which is why you won't hear a note that sounds out. Um, so you're going to bring your pinky up, 18th fret, then 17, then 15. So then walk it back up on the second string, 17, 18. So. Okay, and then you're gonna you're gonna do on the first string 15, 17, pinky 19, back to 17, 15. So okay, so it's okay. So put those two sections together, okay? So you'll have... Okay, and that is your section one. So like I said, jumping from all the way back to here, string change, at the speed that that is going, for me, was just really difficult, okay? So what I did is I just played the exact same notes on the first string instead, and that looks something like this. You see how much easier that was? Yeah, I was staying on the same string, so I was able to walk it up. And um, when I got to the final lick, it, even though the pattern changed, it was still on the same strings and it, it fell into it diatonically um, or, or scale-wise the way it moved up. So I'll play it through for you and you can make a decision on which way you want to do it. The notes stay exactly the same. We're just finding those notes 
here instead, which makes way more sense to me. But it doesn't sound like he's doing that on the record because the the, th the string sounds a lot thicker, you know, just, just as far as tone goes. Um, so I don't know. We've got no live reference point. This is what I've made for, of it. So I'll show you slow what I did for my version. It's just the same thing. Here's your lick. Okay. So it's exactly the same patterns, just starting from 12. Okay. Okay. So there is the, um, the first section. Okay. So... You guys decide how you want to do it. Um, I think Padge did it on the second string, higher up, either 24 fret guitar to get those last couple of notes. Um, but if not, he just had to jump back to get that last little lick on the end. Um, but or, or who knows, you know, his guitar might sound different and he just kept it all to the, to the one string, which makes more sense to me. Um, it's up to you guys, you know. Um, the most important thing is I believe the notes are right. I sat with it really slow over and over and over again and i believe that one of those will get you through okay so let's move on to the next part which is your melodic part okay and it looks something like this okay so that's just going to start off coming out of that really fast lick at the end of section one you're going to land on third string, 14th fret, and you're gonna walk it up from 12. Okay, so that's, t that's 12, 12, 14. Picking uh, 14, sliding up to 16. Back to 14, back to 16. Pick 16, but slide into um, 17, and then pick 16 again, okay, so it's And then you're going to end with your third finger, or finger of your choice, it's up to you, uh, on the fourth string, 17th fret. Okay, so that all together. Then, I like to slide from uh, 17 up to 19, then back to 17 and then back to 16 okay so you've got then what I do at the end of that is I go 17 16 then I bar my finger across on the fourth and fifth string and I walk it down on fret uh, 17. Okay, so it's... Okay, once I've got that little bar in place, I'm going to do, on the 5th string, 15, followed by 14, followed by 12 to finish. Okay, that's a lot. Okay, so, you know, a lot to just break down like that. So I'll, I'll play it, and hopefully me playing it does... Uh, you know, does the trick rather than me just barking notes at you. So nice and slow, section two looks something like this. One more time. Okay, so that's your section two. Next part, section three, looks something like this.
So we're going to start off with these sort of uh, scale runs, these scale patterns. And um, you're going to start on the uh, the fourth string, ninth fret, and it's parallel, okay? So you're going to keep the shape the same. So what you do on the fourth string stays the same for the uh, for the third string, okay? And it's going to go... Okay, so you've got 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12. When you get to 12 on the uh, the third string, pick it again. And give it a bit of a bend, okay? Very subtle bend, that. Okay, next one. You're going to bring it forward. you got 10, 12, 14. Same pattern per string. So when you hit that 14 on the third string, pick it twice, and the last one, give it a little bend up. Okay, so so far. Move it forward. Then, this one doesn't stay parallel. You've got to stretch, okay? So it goes 12, 14, 15. Then 12, 14, 16. And then, same idea. Pick um, 16 twice. And the last one, bend it up. Okay, so you've got... Like that. Okay, so all together. Then what you've got... Very similar to the pattern that we did earlier um, in, in part, part one, the last lick, but you're just going to change the frets. Which is very much Padge's um, filler thing to the next section. He does this pattern in solos all the time. The new album is loaded with it, um, but it's very much kind of, I don't know, he'll do like a run, very much like the one we've just done, and then he always stick that sort of thing on the end of it. So um, the frets, it's a parallel pattern, so it stays the same frets for each string. Um, you're gonna have frets uh, 13, 15, and 17, okay? And watch the pattern, it's exactly the same as earlier. Starting with 17, you're gonna go to your first finger, 13, walk it up, middle finger, 15, back to Pinky, 17. Then walk it back down. 15, 13. Move on to the next string and walk it down. 17, 15, 13. Then walk it up. Okay, so, so far. Then, you're just going to do which is 13, 15, 17, then walk it back, 15, 13. So all together. Okay. Okay, so that is your section three. I'll put that together for you now. So you've got... Okay, so that's section three. Next, section four. I'll, uh, I'll show you it and then we'll break it down. Okay, so fairly simple stuff. You're just gonna slide with your first finger on the third string into uh, into 17th fret, give it a bit of a shake when you're there. Same thing for 16. Slide into it next door. Then what you've got is this uh, sort of um, 
alternate pick little run right here. You're going to have 14 on the third string. Your pinky is going to do 17 on the second string, okay? So you've got... Okay, so you're going back and forth between those, so... Then, you do the same thing for 12. And then I believe... To, to end it, he does 10 and 9, and he just, he doesn't alternate pick those, he just single notes those, okay? So... Something like that, okay? So, so far... Something like that, he might alternate pick that. He might throw some alternate picks there on the tam, but I believe, actually, that he's just doing it as single, okay? So, you're just going to do all that run twice, okay? It's that simple. So, I'll put all that together for you now. Okay, so that is your section four, nice and easy uh, stuff right there. Then what you've got is the climb and the descend. Now, you know, in the uh, in the first section when I said, well, I think he plays it up here, but you could play it down here. Um, I think this is the same situation. However, if you were to play this run up here on the on the second and the third string, it is it is making really hard work of what can be a really simple lick. So as a guitar teacher, I am not going to show it you that way. If you want to find those notes and trying to traverse the neck with the way it would pan out on those two strings, feel free. But um, you can you can do this on the second and um, first string and not have to change your pattern, keeping it parallel. So what do I mean by that? Same frets for each string. Okay. If you choose to do this on the third and second string, it's just, again, like I said, it's it's really making hard work out of something which is, you know, which could be quite easy, okay? So if you want to go and work that out, entirely up to you. But, um, you know, this run is exactly the notes that he's playing, I believe, as close as possible. Um, and this is what I did in my cover, so I'll show you what's going on. Something like that, okay? The other reason why I like to do it like this is um, it guides you into the final run. So if you were to do this run... Look how that run brings you into the last part. Yeah, mathematically, it works out. Okay, and and uh, physically it works out. Yeah, you're you're building, 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 building on the same strings, and then once you it walks you into the descending run. If one were to do it on the third string, you'd be way past where you need to be. Okay, if you, if you were to do this run up here, you'd end up all the way up here, and then you'd have to jump all the way back here to do your run down. Yes, you could find those notes on on different strings maybe, but. This is the way I think works best to play this run. So here we go. It's the same pattern for each shape, okay? So you're going to start off on the second string, and you're going to go 8, 10, 12. Bring your first finger onto the next string, which is um, 8. And then your pinky goes back to 12. Okay? And then back to 8 again. Then what you're going to do is a pull-off. With your middle finger or third finger, whichever way you like to do these sorts of stretches, I use my middle. Okay, I know Padge likes to as well. And you're going to pick the uh, the tenth fret, and you're going to pull back to eight. Okay, so you go like that. Then bring your pinky back to the twelve on the second string, and then walk it up on the first string. Eight, ten, twelve. Then what you've got is exactly the same picking pattern, okay? 
but you're just going to change the frets. Just walk it up one now, okay? And this is where things get really messy when you're on the uh, third and second string because the shapes are not parallel. They, they, they're really awkward cross strings. Um, so this time you're going to have 10, 12, 13, and same picking pattern, okay? But just 10, 12, and 13 this time. Your pull off is on 12 to 10. Okay. So notice how learning the pat pattern here, you can just take it up the neck, okay? Follow the pattern. Last one, same picking pattern, but 12, 13, 15 for both strings, which is great. Okay. So everything so far. Then bring it up. 10, 12, 13. Then bring it up. 12, 13, 15. And look how nicely that leads us into our run. Yeah, which again is going to be nice parallel patterns. So you're going to have, for that part, you're going to just descend it. You're going to do 17 on the first string, so 17, 15, 13. Same thing on the next string, second string, 17, 15, 13. Then just bring the shape over. We're going to just play exactly the same notes, an octave down. So that's going to be... That's going to be 14, 12, 10. And then same for the fifth, fourth string. And then land with your middle finger, 12th fret, fifth string. That brings it home, okay? So you've got... So like I said, if you wanted to play it further up the neck, you know. Look, I've had to go from there to there just to get the first lick in. And the pattern changes and it gets really awkward. Yes, it's important to know your scales and your patterns and where everything sits 100%. I'm not saying, you know, you should slack off with all that stuff. You know, you need to know it. But at the same time, it's just like, you know, having that knowledge guided me toward going hang on a minute there's a well easier way to do that so it doesn't mean you know you need to make life hard for yourself just because you know some of the theoretical aspects you know so i'll play that section all together for you now or not <laughs> and again Okay, so what I'll do for you now is I'll put the whole solo together for you and then we'll do the uh, the harmony little leads that happen at the end, which are kind of different guitars at that point, and then, uh, and then we're done, okay? Um, so here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay? And that is it. That is your guitar solo. You're welcome. <laughs> that is uh that has been uh, a long, you know, a long time coming for me that one. I had I had a real hard time getting that first run up to speed, so you know, don't expect yourselves <clears throat> you know, if um if you're new to this to get that first that first fast run, you know, straight up to speed, you know, I've really had to work these last couple of weeks to get, you know, not even close to where at the you know, the speed he's playing it at. So yeah, take your time with that one and find what um what fits for you. You know, like I've given you the two ways that you can do the the first ascending run. One that I think is on the record, which is the second string. One which makes more sense to me personally, especially if you've got a 22 fret guitar. If you're looking for that target lick up here, you know, if you're looking for that target lick, it makes more sense to work up to it on the same strings, the same strings that that lick is on, than going all the way up on different strings and then having to jump back to get to it. Okay, so there you go. There's that. Right, harmony lead time, and then um, and then we're done. Right, okay, a little lead at the end, uh, the little harmonies at the end of the solo. I'll show you that now. So um, you've got two guitars, you're one that's doing the sort of higher thing going on, and then you've got one that's doing a lower sort of thing. Um, and uh, I'll show you what that is now. So we'll do guitar one first. So it looks something like this. Something like that. This is really dense, actually, the way it's mixed, this part. For some reason, it just sounds really weird. And it was really hard trying to move the track around in Cubase to, to hear, like, each individual guitar. I feel like there's more than just two guitars on there doing this part, but these are the two guitar parts that I've singled out. So this is your guitar one. So you're going to start off third string. So you can slide into nine if you want. And then you're going to do ten. And then pick seven. Then what you've got is this little uh, hammer on poly thing. The way I'm doing that, first finger four. You pick, uh, pick four, hammer five, pull back to four. Pinky comes over onto seventh fret, fourth string. Then you're going to walk it up on back on the third string. Four, five, seven. Okay, so it's and then you're gonna finish on your your root note, I guess, which is seventh fret fourth string. So it's okay, so guitar one all together. Okay. Guitar number two looks something like this. So second string, eight to ten. Then ten on the third string. Okay. You can slide into that eight if you want. Then. So to get that, you're going to pick seventh fret on the third string. And hammer onto nine, pull back to seven. So then and your pinky comes over to ten on the fourth string, back to seven, walk it up, nine, ten. Okay, so you've got okay, and then finish tenth fret on the fourth string. So that all together. One more time. Which sounds odd on its own. Um, I'm, I'm aware of that, but if you stick it with the harmony beneath it or the counterpoint, if you like, um, I believe that's what's going on. And I believe that is your Tears Don't Fall Part 2. Um, as accurate um, and descriptive as I can get it for you guys. So hopefully this has helped. Um, forgive me if there's one or two notes out of place. I'm pretty sure there always is. This is my interpretation. Like I said, it's very hard when I've got no um, live version to go off to watch the guys play in it. Um, but I believe if you play everything, um, that I've, you know, the way that I've shown you to do it, I believe you guys at home, you put that together 
um, you will get close to how uh, this song is played. Okay, so that is my full guitar lesson and uh, song breakdown for Tears Don't Fall Part 2. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, let me know what you guys want to see in the next video. As always, goes without saying, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave the like. Um, subscribe if you're new here, leave a comment, let me know what you think because it helps this channel out a heck of a lot because a lot of work goes into these, uh, th these lesson videos. They take a long time to make, so um, your support is greatly appreciated. If you made it this far into the video, once again, thank you so much. And until next time, guys, stay well, stay healthy, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.